Hello, welcome to another Creative Futures session here on Glyndur TV, part of Glyndur University. I'm Graham Park, and this is the programme where I talk to a variety of creatives from across the creative sector about what they do, how they ended up doing it, and their career, and what advice and tips they can offer to our students. And today, I'm very excited to welcome to the show Dan Reed, who is a photographer and a fantastic photographer as well. Dan, welcome to Creative Futures. Hello. So, Hello, Graham. How are you? Great. I'm very well. You're joining us online from Southampton with a lovely uh, flower, flowering bush behind Camellia. you. The camellia. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, that's but, the yeah. one. Uh, so, Dan, photographer, you, you do a variety of things. Um, before we come to that, tell us how you ended up becoming a photographer. What, what was the young Dan Reed like? Um, I, think, I, I think I've always been into photography as a kid, and I used to, I, I remember just being amazed by like movie cover, movie posters, and video covers, and you know, like obviously, you know, back in the day, the videos, <laughs> VHS. And, uh, and I used to love that I'd collect like books just for their covers because I loved photography or, or just the images, you know, that be it a, like I said, movie cover or a, uh, a bit of art, but it was a picture or something like that, you know. And I, I always remember going and collecting posters when I was a kid and, and stuff like that. So I was always interested in that sort of photography, if you know what I mean, mostly portraits. That's what I really enjoyed, like collecting and stuff like that. So when did you start, taking, then, when did you start taking photographs? Well, I, I mean, I, from about the age of like, well, 16, 17, I'd take my film camera out to clubs, like in the early 90s, as you know, Graham, you know, we actually weren't allowed to sl sl take them in to a lot of places, but because we've got a good scene down in Southampton and we had friends and all that that put on events and everything that I could take my camera in. But like, you know, it was it was like that where I just always had my camera with me and love taking photos of people and friends and DJs see, and everything like that. See, that's interesting so, because you are well known for, 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 for club shots, live shots, yeah. and shots of DJs and bands. And you just said that in the early 90s, you know, you couldn't bring you, a lot of clubs wouldn't let you bring your camera they in. They wouldn't let you in, no. You managed to do it and, you, and I'm sure you've got a great back catalogue of shots that, that are probably uh, fantastic. I, haven't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've got like, you know, you see some of the old classic rave or things like that. I haven't got that right. because I wasn't there. Right, okay. So it's more like sort of local events. Actually, the funniest thing before I say that is probably the oldest picture I have got is me and you on the Space Terrace. Really? In 1992. Yeah, wow. and I've got long hair. Oh, down to here. wow. You have to yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that brings about, you have to send me a copy of that again. I will um, do, yeah. No, but my point is um, back then, pre smartphone, yeah. nobody had a camera in a yeah. car. Nobody. Everyone just no. parted. Now, Fast forward, like to the to about ten years ago, when when the yeah. iPhone came along, everyone yeah. has got a smartphone. Everyone's taking photographs. How, yeah. how does that affect what you do in a club? Do you know what? It's not. I'm not a massive fan of it, if I'm being honest. However, we all do it. Like I'm there taking a photo, and then I'll do. We were talking about before we went live. I'll do a real, you know, where I am at the club, just to. But I'm not one of those that will just film the whole event. You know, I do a lot of live shows where I can't, you know, I'm, I find it flabbergasting as, as personally that someone's there the whole time filming. The, they're not even watching the show, which is up to them. Yeah. I get it. But I did a, I did a show the other week at Printworks in London. Um, and it was like, a, like a six o'clock. It was a time where it was supposed to be some, like, well, it was amazing production. And from a photographer's point of view, it looks great where everyone's got their phones up and they're all filming that certain moment, similar to what it used to be like when they do concerts with the lighters. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So you get that. I've done a few gigs where I've been on stage and you get, uh, you know, everyone holding their phone lights up. That looks great. But it is quite frustrating sometimes where you're trying to get a good shot and it's just everyone, you're holding their phones up. I can it's imagine. just a bit. I can yeah. imagine. Let's go back though. You, you say you got your, uh, your your old film camera and went to clubs uh, where you're yeah. allowed to take shots. Um, yeah. How do you, I mean? Did you have any training? How did you? No, it, yeah. it's, it's, it's definitely right place, right time, and who I knew. But um, my friend was um, resident at John Digweed's club, Bedrock, uh, that was at Heaven every Thursday back in the late '90s, and he had a few tracks. Phil Thompson, he's a friend of mine. Actually, I want to say hello, and uh, he. Um, he uh, had his press shots done 
for a release he had on Bedrock at um, Sony Music in London. And basically what happened was um, uh, he was having his photos done and said, oh, my mate's really into photography. And, and the photographer said, oh, well, get him to give me a call. And uh, he can come up and probably, you know, spend a few days with me and learn, you know, have a thing. And that was probably 98 or something like that. And I did it for four years. And I just went up to London three, four times a week, slept on friends' floors that I went to university with and learned the trade from that. What did you, you said university, what did you do at university? Uh, <laughs> travel and tourism. Tra <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what, what, yeah. what, what, what? With business and finance, great. Okay, so business, what transferable finance, skills yeah. did you get? That you can apply to your practice, but business and finance. Do you know what? I, I don't. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm going to be totally honest. It. You know. It. I was always interested in tourism and travel and and you know and that sort of thing. But I think you know. I. I. I, I being honest, I didn't know what I wanted to do. If you know what I mean. And I think after after I left uni, I worked in a clothes shop for three or four years, designed a clothes shop. But I always was into photography and, you know, I mean, if I had said to myself back then what I'm doing now, I'd, I wouldn't believe it, if you know what I mean. It was just, it was just like you say, it's right place, right time, yeah. right choices at it's, the time. It's a common theme amongst a lot of the people that we talk to on this show. Um, yeah. Tell us about your first camera. What was it? Oh, it, I, it was my dad's. It was a Canon. It was a, it was a little compact. All right. And then I went up to, and then one, that was like my first one that I had in clubs. And then I went up to a Canon EOS one, which was like a big DSLR. And I also went to a Bronica, which is a um, medium format. So it's like, a, you know, the one that you look through, you always yeah, explain yeah. it's the bigger film. And then I went up to Mamiya and then went digital. So, you know, those are the... When did you go digital? 2003. So, so is that quite early in the? In yeah, the, it was. It and why? Was. I mean, because, I mean, did did you go? Oh, this is great. I mean, it's, it's, I can draw a comparison with like vinyl, and yeah. and digital files. Yeah. And I know a lot of me and my peers were a bit sceptical about. Oh, hang on a minute. How can you use a CD and how can you download music? Yeah. But did you did you embrace the digital technology? I, I think I did because, bearing in mind when I got into photography it was a bit later. So I wasn't that purist, you know, bearing in mind I'm a DJ, as you know, so I was also a vinylist back then as well. But I was also um, with, 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 you know, I learned in the dark room when I was at Sony and with Chris Lopez, who's the photographer there, I owe a lot to as well. And, um, you know, I was on the end of that, really. Those last three or four years, I was film and it was dev and contact and things like that. But when the, the digital came along, I really liked the, I think I like the, not manipulation, because I don't like doing that, but I like the making your own style in Photoshop and tweaking things and all that, which is obviously a lot easier to do than doing it when you were on film where you had to scan it and, and right. things like that. So I like the, I like the, the quickness of it, if yeah. you know what I mean. I mean, now it's instant, obviously, but I, I like the, some people don't. Some people, I know a lot of photographers have gone back to film. Yeah. But I love that I've just invested in, I've gone mirrorless in the last like year, which is, you know, another format of, of digital. And it's the best thing I've ever done. I'm absolutely loving it. So I, I do like to embrace the technology a little bit more as well. So, so you're I just not all, went back then. So you're not all misty eyed about the old days then? Uh, well, I've still got all my like, all my old, um, you know, like contact sheets upstairs in the loft and all the prints that I used to print off in the dark room and all that. I like that. And, and what, you know, one thing, you know, <clears throat> we, we'll talk about later with magazine covers and magazines is that there's nothing that beats seeing that in print. Nothing for me. You know, I've done billboards and magazine covers and books and everything. That You can't beat that because it's the same with all of us when we've got all our photos on these but when you get them printed off, you're going, oh, wow, they look amazing. But we've got thousands of images, thousands. So, do you know what I mean? So, so in, in the old days, did you have to do, like, a photo shoot? You do, say, say a studio um, yeah. gig, you have to do Polaroids to, to kind of check everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was a medium format camera. So, with a Mamiya, you would have, <clears> oh, <throat> do you know, what? I can't even remember that much how to do it, but <laughs> you'd have a Polaroid first to get the lighting yeah. right. So, you'd look at the Polaroid and check that the lighting was. Okay, and then you'd go on to film, and I think it was 12 rolls on a medium format, so you didn't have a lot. Nowadays, I'd, you know, you could take 
2000 pictures, you know, and, and get it. So does that, I mean, does that affect how you work? Because, I mean, there's another comparison with audio, with, uh, with mm. if you had uh, a, a tape, then, you know, when yeah. the tapes run out, you finish. <laughs> Many times that happened, yeah. But with digital um, technology, with audio, you can just keep yeah. going and going and copy yeah. and paste, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. it makes you people work in a different way. Is that the same with uh, photography? It is, it, it, yeah, it is. And obviously talking about tapes is that you remember you do a mixtape and then you'd muck up the last mix <laughs> and then you'd have to start again. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It would be, ah, it's yeah. so frustrating. And now you've got a things like that, you can just cut it out and paste it. And um, I think I think with with um, with the with the film cameras, obviously you've got to be more aware of what how what how many rolls you've got, how many like pictures you've got on that film. But does it I mean, make, you know, you do a wedding or something, or a. Does it make you work in a different way, though? Sorry, mate. Are you, well, yeah, I think it would do. Yeah, I mean, I, I, you could be a lot more snap happy with with digital, obviously, compared to film, and obviously. <laughs> With the, with the film thing as well, you can't see what you're shooting. You can't see the end result until you get it contacted, get it contacted. That's the thing apart from the Polaroid. So your settings could be miles out. I remember getting things back and going, oh my God, you know, you know, oh God, we've got, we got a lot of work to do on these, you know, afterwards, you know, or you get it right. You know, it, you'd be a lot more sort of careful, I think, when you especially portrait shoots, because you'd only have a certain number of, you know, sort of shots each roll. So you'd be a lot more careful where now you can be a little bit more sort of like snap easy sort of thing. Tell, tell us about the, the time you spent, go back to the time you spent um, learning from another photographer. Um, how important was that? I, I mean, Chris, Chris was brilliant. There was a few of us there that have all gone on to do great things and different, you know, different areas of photography and, and all that. But it was just an experience like, you know, it was in Soho in London, you know, back in the you know, mid to late 90s, which was buzzing. And it's a different place now, you mm -hmm. know, because there were labs everywhere. And, you know, it was, it, I, I know, Graham, you must have been down into Soho then. And it was like, it was a place of it like was. creatives and everything down there. And it was a really cool thing. So being like a 19, 20 year old there was great, you know, and seeing, you know, we'd have people come into the studio all the time, like, you know, my first shoot was with the band Reef. Do you remember Reef? Like they were like a like a rock band, and then with the Manic Street Preachers in. You know, I, I didn't know a lot about because I was into electronic music. So, what about me? Uh, you know, so I was always making tea and learning. You know, watching everything that's going on, and you know, changing film and picking up prints from the lab and things like that. You know, so so you so you're learning like technique, and also learning how how yeah, how, yeah, how, yeah. how a free how a freelancer worked as well. Learning technique and the other thing as well that, that was, was great was that Chris had a studio there. So when he went, you know, went home or I could use the studio for my shots, my shoots. So I'd get a lot of my friends, uh, actually well-known DJs now, that would come in and do it for free and then just experiment and, and like go what Chris Chris had learned. You know, I'd watch, sorry, rather watch, I'd watch Chris do. And then, I'd, you know, back then I'd had books and things like that. So I'd try and, like, you know, they'd have a books where they'd have pictures of how to set up the lights and settings. So I'd do practice stuff and test shoots all the time. Um, <clears throat> so I was just, um, you're getting a bit uh, jittery there. So... Um, oh, was it? Yeah, no, that's fine. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, you're all right now. So, um, I forgot, I forgot what I was going to ask. Let's, let's have a look at some, some of your pictures then before we continue. Um, now you said okay. you can't see them, but if I say I've got a, a, an image of Andy Serkis, dressed in, yeah. a, in a red gown and a crown. Um, tell us about that this. That was um, last year, yeah. So tell that us about this. last year, and that was actually done outside because it was the height of um, COVID. Oh, right, OK. And so... it was done absolutely freezing outside. It was like, it was got to be wonderful. We all had, um, you know, all the masks and the shields and everything on because he'd just finished. or He was just going off to um, mix down Ve uh, Venom 2. Carnage, because he just directed that last year. Mm -hmm. And the shoot was for, um, he was a friend of mine, um, is doing the tour of the Magna Carta. Okay. So he was, um, that it was a, it was, it used to go with the exhibition that was going to start in Washington, D.C. So it was, uh, I think it's King John. I'm sorry, it, I think it is King John. 
that he was he was portraying. But how? I mean, how did you get this gig? Because I've, 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 you know, your website's got loads of shots of like DJs and live bands and 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 like uh, fashion work and magazine covers. But I, I chose this to talk about because it really stands out. It's a very famous actor and director. Um, okay, you, you've already said it was taken outside, but how did you get how did you get that gig? And how do yeah. you and how do you deal with someone who's so well known? It it's it, um, it basically uh, Andy is um, has a good affiliation with uh, uh, Alan Sherman, who looks after a lot of Carl Cox's stuff. So it worked with that. So I worked with Carl a lot. All oh, right. So, so, so an, exa an example of it, it, it was weird. It's a weird situation where he works with. He's very very good friends with Andy Alon, who's he's and he was one of the. Um, people that's putting together the Magna Carta tour. So it was one of those things. So it was like, oh, we need a photographer. Do you want to do this? And I was like, yes, because that's just something I'd really like to get into as actors. So that, that, kind of, that kind of shows the importance of uh, being connected and, and, and networking. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so, so that was taken outside. So you, you, you didn't have any control over the lighting or, or, or did yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. I, I had outdoor lights oh, right, and okay. soft boxes and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah. Okay, I was let's... just freezing, and yeah. my glasses were steaming up. <laughs> let's move on to the next picture. I had to choose this because it's because it's Liam Gallagher with uh, a cravat on. I'm guessing that's a, a shot for Pretty Green, is it? He's got a cravat on. He's looking into the sun with sunglasses on. Yeah, that was um, that was uh, uh, on Hampstead Heath, Hampstead Heath, uh, yeah. about ten years ago, and that was about six, seven a.m. in the morning. Oh, really? Um, we were doing a sunrise shoot for uh, Pretty Green, yeah. And was he still up for the night before, or did he wake up early for this one? <laughs> no, he was. <clears throat> we'd been had a few drinks the night before as well. So oh, really? He, yeah, I was. I had a stinking hangover. Brilliant. <laughs> for that shoot, yeah. But um, it was, uh, yeah, that was. Great. It, okay, so you had a few drinks really from the night before. From that. You said you had a few drinks from the night before. Does it help that you have a relationship with a client? Does that influence how the photograph session, how the photo shoot turns yeah, out? Yeah, I mean, I. Yeah, I think for me, I, I think connecting with the with the client is eighty percent of what your job is, because you've got to make them feel comfortable, you know. And Liam's had his photo taken millions of times, you know, in that sort of sense. So you you and, you'd know you've met him before. You've met him before this, obviously. Yeah, I mean, before. you know, it just you just got to be professional and just like you know, be you know, just be. I'm quite down to earth, as you know, Graham. So I'm quite a sort of. Like, I uh, hopefully make people feel at ease. So I'm not one of those photographers that are quite quiet. I'm quite, like, sort of... I know. Up for, you know. <laughs> I know, and that's good. That is, so, that, I and think that's me, good, and Hopefully that's half my job, and especially shooting... Liam was a bit different because, obviously, he's a rock star, and that's a bit different. You know, he, he knows what to do, but shooting DJs and producers is, is hard because they're just guys, women that are <clears> throat> in throat> the okay, studio. Then. As a comparison, then, um, yeah. this is someone that you know you've got a relationship with and someone you had a few drinks with the night before. Yeah. Um, so you've got a relationship and it's all, it all works very well. How would you approach taking a photograph of yeah. a legend like Niall Rogers? And we've got a picture here of Niall uh, with his floral pink suit on and his guitar clutched yeah, yeah. Chest. That was at Abbey Road as well, actually. Abbey Road? So, um, Good Lord, that's amazing. Yeah, that was amazing. But how did you and we went outside obviously, and did some photos. Obviously, you probably, this was probably the first time you met him, was it? It was the first time I met him. I know, do you know what? I, yeah, I, it was the first time I'd met him to, to say hello to, but he'd been in... I, I said hello to him in Ibiza when we Got were it. at IMS, but um, that was for DJ Mag. That was a front cover shoot. Um, to be honest... If you've met Niall, you'll know how much of a nice guy he is and how much of a cool, humble guy he is straight away. So when you meet someone like that and he's up, yeah, yeah, man, no, that's good, that puts you at ease straight away because there's no guard in front of them. Well, that, to... That's interesting. So, you know, you, you, you're talking about, you know, having a good relationship with the, with the client, but if you say that the client makes you feel at ease, was it, was it, were you a bit kind of like starstruck? Oh, my God, it's Niall Rogers. N no. The only time I have done is I probably when I first did a Liam shoot because that oh, was right, the okay. first because massive Oasis fan, massive right. Oasis fan back in the nineties. But it goes after a couple of minutes because you've got to get your head around what you've got to do. Apart from that, I'm I'm never starstruck. I'm always a little bit more apprehensive of what I'm going to do. But when you know when you come and meet the artist before, say I went and saw Niall and you know he's such a nice guy. 
part of that sort of makes you feel at ease straight away. And you're sort of like, right, OK, now, now it's down to you to make him feel comfortable. He's made you feel comfortable. You know? OK, well, let's, let's flip that over. So you talk, they say Niall that you've never met made you feel at ease and you just got on with it yeah. by professional. What about a client that you don't get on with or a client that's perhaps a bit awkward? How do you deal with that? Do you know what? I've not touched wood. I've never had anyone that I've not got on with. The awkward, the awkward things come up just because most people don't like having their photos taken. That's the thing. And if they're there for a press shoot, they're either they need it because they've got so much more promotion stuff to do, or their managers have told them that they need a new press shot. So it's more for me to make the artist feel comfortable. Like I said, it's, it's oh, there's been times when you're doing a photo shoot and going. Oof, this is not going well. They're, they're not feeling comfortable. Then we just have a stop. We might have a drink. We might have a sit down, have a chat, and then you know, take it at a, a nice pace. To but is it is this? this I mean, it. that sounds like a really gr a great technique. There is that something you learned when you were working as a, as an assistant? Do you get you go uh, watching uh, yeah, this? Yeah, I think sometimes, but obviously that's my personality. Right. So you know, I think that's for me. I'm quite a sort of chatty, friendly guy. So. Um, that helps. Next, next image. Uh, we've had three kind of individual shots now. Um, someone's, someone's got their mic open. If someone's joined, can you mute your mic? Thank you. Um, this is a picture now of the House Gospel Choir, and they're sat outside oh, okay. a house on some steps. So how do you yeah. take a, how do you take a group <coughs> shot? Because every single person in this picture has got the most amazing smile and they're all looking at the camera uh i've worked with them for quite a long time actually and they're lovely they're such a good bunch my friend my friends actually you're probably asked how did i get this job one of my friends is in the choir oh, so right, okay. it was one of those yeah 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 so again it's who you know it's all about networking so um she was in it um i've been working i've been doing a lot of their live stuff and this was on the back of a music video they were doing and they needed some press shots. So they said, can you come down and in between takes? Can we, cause, can we do a, like a, because it's obviously a lot of them and it's quite tricky to do. Um, and then just, yeah, we did, didn't even get that many frames, but just, I'd been with them all day shooting and chatting and having a laugh with them. So it was quite nice. They knew who I was. It wasn't, I just turned up. Like, right guys, let's do a photo. See, that doesn't so sound like a, nice. They sort of, you know. That doesn't sound like up. a gig. That doesn't sound like like work. You're hanging out, having a great time and just happen to, to, to take some snaps, really. I love my job, mate. It's yeah. a great, it's a great, you know, yeah. Okay, yeah. let's move on now to something that's obviously that you've, um, tell me, it's, it's Groove Armada and they're lying on some grass with daisies. Um, one's up, yeah. One of them's upside down, heads by each other with sunglasses on. Lovely shot. Is this yeah. something that you came up with or did they have an idea? Tell, tell us about how this It was shot. actually, yeah. No, it was mine. It was, um, it, that was a mixed man cover and it was for um, festivals. It was a festival idea. We came up with loads of ideas with, with this cover. I wanted to cover them in, um, you know, uh, powder paint. Right. You know, like they've been yeah. at like, some festivals and do it like that. And... But I wanted to cover them in panda powder, you know, like proper. Yeah. And they weren't they, the guys, which who were lovely, weren't completely into that. He just wanted a bit. And the other thing as well, I don't, you've met Andy and Tom before, I can imagine yeah. Graham. Yeah, yeah. Andy is like really tall, like like compared to Tom. Andy's I think like six foot seven. Of course, yeah. Tom's like. You know. So so the problem is with that is when you're getting them on the cover, it's the size difference, mm. if you know what I mean, like, you know, and then you've got to think of like the the magazine logo, you know, where does that run and all this, the, the text. So I, I thought it'd be a good idea to kick them, you know, like that. So, so, th 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 so are these kind of thoughts? I shot them overhead. Yeah. Are these kind of thoughts in your head on the way to the, to the photo shoot? You're thinking, how am I going to um, do it? No, 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 this was, no, this was, um, I like to do mood boards before each shoot, so come up with ideas like pin interest is brilliant, stuff like that, or oh, yeah, exactly. you know ma old magazine covers and old you know even other photographers like you know just especially the older the sort of top top like you know sort of um, band photographers or things like that and you know just just having ideas and asking the artists what they like and then we spoke to the magazine and we had a meeting and then we got like a mood board going and then we decided you know this works this works. 
and uh, give it different scenarios on the day. Who, what photographers um, do you admire? We'll, we'll, come, we'll come back to uh, photographs uh, in a minute. What photographers do you admire? Yeah. Um, I love, I love, you know, I love the old classics like David Bailey, you know, just because of who they've shot as well. You know, you look at it and you go, oh my God, you know, um, Terry O'Neill and uh, David LaChapelle and, and all that sort of ranking. I like ranking stuff. Um, there's a, there's a photographer that does a lot for Vanity Fair called Mark Selger. Love his stuff. And that was, his photography is great. Um, yeah, just, uh, I, like, I like, you know, that sort of classic sort of portraiture photography. And I mean, do you, do you still get influenced by those people, or what? Where, where do you? What influences you now? Do you see? Do you see something? Go, wow! I want to do that. Yeah, I, I do. I do not as much with the with the, those. Those, I think, because obviously throughout the years I've sort of adapted my style to what I like, but also follow so many photographers on Instagram and things like that. Just to, you know, sometimes it's not good because you look at it and go, oh my god, that's amazing. But it also inspires you to kick yourself up the arse and go, right, let's try things different. Don't get set in your ways. Let's try new techniques and everything like that. And I think that definitely works for me, is looking at other people's <coughs> work and sort of feeling inspired to make your work better. Uh, you mentioned Instagram there. Um, how has that changed how people like you work? I mean, is, is it a factor in what you do? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's another way for everyone to see your work. I just find it harder and harder for people to see your work. Because obviously, they keep changing algorithms and things like that where you have to pay mm. for more people to see it. You know, it's, it's, it's frustrating, but you just keep putting it on there. And you know, like I said to you before, TikTok I've been using more, not for stills, more for behind the scenes. And yeah. when I'm at gigs, I'm doing little sort of like behind the scenes stuff and all that. Do you, I mean, do it's you just another way of getting your name out? Do you have an assistant? I do have a few assistants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And how, I mean, how and how they're do, good. They're good. Do they come to you, or do you go looking for them? And and and, and, and anyone who's uh, watching this, what opportunities are there um, for someone who wants to learn and, and and go the way you did to get an assistant's job? So I live in Southampton, so I do predominantly ninety percent of my work in London or abroad. Uh, lately, not abroad because of COVID, but. So most of my work's in London. So most of my assistants are in London. I either drive up or get the train. We hire a studio and I meet my assistant. But that's been down. I've been probably been had 20 or 30 assistants throughout the years. Some have been with me for a long time. Others have gone on to be amazing photographers of themselves, similar to what I've done. I've gone on and, did and become, you know, freelance professional photographers. Um, yeah, it's just, you know, there's a, there's a good, a, a lot of them, I've found a lot of the assistants that I've been working with did go to uni. They've gone and they've carried on and they've, they've gone from wherever they've been, Brighton, Southampton, Bristol, and they've gone to, a lot, most of them have gone to London and they've become an assistant, worked at studios and, you know, and worked with other photographers. Well, so what advice would you give uh, a photographer who's, who's currently a student, say, um, who, who wants to, you know, get experience and, and be an assistant? What, what advice would you give? I would write to studios because they're all looking for interns. Write to photographers. Obviously, you've got Instagram now, so it's not like the old days where you can't find, you have to email them, you know, message them on Instagram. I get it all the time. You know, some I do take on. It's just like, can I come in for a, you know, come and meet you and, you know, and perhaps I'll one day have my normal assistant and then I'll get someone that's coming in just to learn and they go in, you know, more of a, like an intern sort of, sort of thing. Um, but don't be scared to email people or message and, people. I mean, and that's that's true. Not just for photographers, but you know, any yeah. discipline really. Just if you if yeah. you connect, you don't ask, you don't get. You know exactly. You don't. And do you think social media um, has helped in 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 this situation? Because you, like I say, I, I if I was a budding photographer, I and I watched you now, I could then follow your Instagram, and like your posts and yeah. contact you that way. Yeah, yeah, and, and and I think with with that sort of sense as well is that because you've got Instagram now, the, you know when when I started there was nothing. I mean the internet was still that horrible noise dial up, yeah. <laughs> two hours to download something. So you know there were no website. I mean I had a website. I was quite early to get a website actually, but obviously that was your first impressions was a website, and people had. 
people can't just find you. They have to, you have to push people with cards and business cards and, you know, postcards and all that you give out. Mm. That's what I used to do. Send out to, you know, magazines and things like that. Obviously now you've got Facebook, which is still dwindling a little bit, but everyone's got a Facebook page for photography. I know may not be used as much. And then you've got Instagram. So people have still got, they've got that first impressions quickly of your work. If you yeah. know what I mean. You mentioned, you mentioned Pinterest earlier. I'm a big fan of Pinterest. When you yeah. said, yeah, um, me too. You, do you use that? So do you put a mood board on Pinterest and then just show the no. client digitally or send yeah, it to yeah, them? Yeah, I do that or I drag it in and make a yeah. collage already. Yeah, well, how did you, Pinterest what, is what did you do in the old days, pre, pre Pinterest? Did you have to just physically take something that you uh, made? Do you know what I used to do, which I did for probably three or four years, is I used to buy like, my mag favourite magazines were like Q Magazine and places like, I loved the photography. John Wright was a really good photographer that used to work Q. And I used to like rip the covers out and rip the like like prints I liked and all that, you know, and the, and the pages and all that, you know. And I remember going, oh, wow, this is great. And, you know, and then like or NME, some of the old NME, NMEs are good and even DJ Mag and, you know, and stuff. And Rolling Stone magazine, like, I used to love the covers they used to do. They still do. And um, uh, Vanity Fair, so when they did the music, the, mu mu the movie editions yeah. so, so i used just, to rip them out and yeah. just keep everything and then like you know oh, i'd like to do something like this and something like that you know and then obviously when the internet was a bit more sort of um you know sort of a bit more aware then i'd just drag and drop you know things yeah. into a folder well you mentioned magazines and you mentioned dj magazine yeah. you do a lot of uh, magazine work so let's have a look at uh, the picture i've got in the front is your nina kravitz dj mag cover yeah um tell us about this how i mean how how did you get Nina to look? Did you, did, did, did you have to work? It's not with... hard. She's, a, she's beautiful. She's a stunning <laughs> no, woman. I mean, so it helped no, hang on. I mean, did, did, is, did she have a stylist? Did you have to work with a stylist? No. Do you know what? That was a really mad, that was mad because that was, that was quite a few years ago. That's probably about 2013, 12, 13. And that was in um, the Hoxton in her hotel room against wow. the white wall. So wow. just that, just me and her. Right. Like that. It was one of those. She had a gig before, uh, no styling involved and so all she that. Just ring, said, I used a ring flash. Did she say, this is what I'm going to wear? And you went, yeah, fine. Or did you say, well... Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. She, Nina was... She was great. She knew... She, she's a model anyway as well. She models for Boss and things like that, I think. So she knows exactly... Exactly, you know, yeah. the look. Well, she, she knows what she, she's doing. She, she knew. She knew, yeah, yeah. yeah Which you, makes but, it so but much it helped. easier. So, so, so you basically sent to photograph a DJ, but you end up photographing a model, which is something that, you know... That, yeah, I mean, she's an amazing DJ, so it's not... She, you know, but she's obviously done modelling before, so she knows what to do, you know. But for DJ Mag, it's been great. I mean, I'm on 49 covers now, so wow. I'm needing that one more. And as you know, Graham, and as everyone knows who's watching magazines aren't around like they used to be. You know, you go into W.H. Smith's no, and the perception is getting smaller and smaller, has, which is a real shame. Has the fact that magazines um, have become more digital, the, the digital formats become more important, does that affect how yeah. you photograph things? Not really, but it's just a shame. Because, well, I, I, you know, it's just, I like physical print. You know, you can't, like I said, the feeling of going into a newsstand and seeing your magazine cover on, on the shelf it's such a great feeling where you might see a shot on Instagram or, you know, a website or a newspaper or something online. It's still great and you still well, copy and paste it out. But... I've got a, I put up an, uh, an image of a live, a live uh, image now. It's chase and status and it's a black and white yeah. image. So um, yeah. moving, you're now moving out of the studio. You're not in control yeah. of what you're taking, right, first of all. Yeah. And secondly... Did you take this photograph in black and white or did you make it black and white? That I shoot everything in colour. Right. And I shoot everything, I personally shoot everything raw. So I don't shoot a JPEG, I shoot it raw because that gives you a lot more sort of, yep. there's a lot more information to manipulate or change in, in, in Photoshop or Lightroom. I use Lightroom or Capture One. Um, but obviously, it depends on the situation. I love shooting live music, absolutely love it. I've been, it's you know, one of my favourite things to do. And uh, it depends on the lighting sometimes. If it's not great lighting and the colours aren't great, it's good to change it into black and white. Right. Because obviously it looks, it can look better. You can make it a bit more grainier and a bit more punchier. Um, and it depends who you're playing. Like, you know, I, I shot 
you know, that's a grungy sort of gig, so black and white works. If yeah, you know exactly. I mean, you know. But what's it like? Because like, obviously if you're doing a fashion shoot, a magazine cover yeah. or a portrait or um, yeah. working with, you know, someone you know like Liam, like, uh, Liam Gallagher, you're in yeah. control of, 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 uh, of everything or, or most yeah. things. Um, but how, how do you approach a gig? Because obviously you are, it looks to me like you're in front of the, of the crowd, you're in front of the crowd here. You're in the you? pit, Nine, yeah. not 85% you're in the pit, if not you're in the front of the house, which is at the back, just depending on what the artist wants. You have what, three songs normally, I would say 99% is three songs, no flash, normally the first three. And you have to get your images done in the first three songs. You're not allowed to use flash. Uh, You've got to be courteous of all the other photographers in the pot pit. Sometimes I did well, a that was the, the other next thing I was going to ask you. You've got photographers. Yeah, would you all get? Do you all get on with each other? Yeah, yeah. It's a, definitely in the south. Obviously, I've I've done quite a lot in London, and you see the same faces. But again, I'm quite a relaxed, easygoing people. And don't <laughs> get me wrong, there are some not. <laughs> there's some a holes that are in the pit before that are just rude and. You know, like that, but just that just goes over my head. As long as they're not, you know, in my face, just get on with it. And when you're doing a um, a live show, I mean, how how does that work? I mean, obviously, yeah. if you're doing if you're doing a, a magazine cover, a fashion shoot, a, a portrait, uh, and you 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 are you're hired um, as a freelancer, yeah. and you get paid, you you agree the fee and you get paid. How does it work with bands? Is it like, can I come and photograph you, or do you no, get so bands asking you? How does it work? So there's, for me, personally, there's two ways that I, I shoot live stuff. One way is you shoot for the artist. Like last year I shot for, I was on tour with uh, Madness. Uh, I did a tour with Pete Tong and his orchestra. I uh, did a tour with Fatboy Slim. So we did that. So we, I did like four or five dates because I did my predominantly style. And you go that way. So you shoot the whole show. Um, and then, you know, you work for them. You work for Nice. They get the pictures afterwards, obviously you can share them. The other way I do it for work for Rex and Shutterstock, which is an image library, similar to Getty and things like that. So I'll take the photos and put them on their server and then they sell them to papers or publications or websites and everything like that. So I use their Just tell us what that's tell us what that's pass. what's that called again? Because you went a bit funny. Just tell us what that's called again. Uh, Rex and Shutterstock. Which is an image library similar to Getty. Okay, cool. Uh, and it, can, know, anyone, so like, can anyone sign like an up? Image library. Can anyone sign up to that, or do you have to? No. Well, you can, but it's quite tricky to get in there because obviously you have to have a standard of work that they'll be want you to. There's loads of people that work for Getty. Just don't expect to go and do Ed Sheeran at Wembley Stadium asking them because obviously there's people that have done it for ages and. And you know what I mean, don't you? So you have to work pick your but it's, right. It's about so that's event. basically you because of your portfolio, because of your reputation, and because of your past, and that's something you've had to work hard at to get to get here. Yeah, I, I think so. I think so. I think that's the way it is. But obviously, that's on gigs. There's so many gigs around the country that you could, you know, contact Getty and go, oh, look, you know, I want to be a photographer for you guys. I want to do these local shows. They might do it or not. To be honest, I'm not 100 percent sure on that. Okay. If you're not well, we, we can wait to get in with the live stuff. Well, there's a bit of research for, for the students to carry out. Um, yeah. Rag and Bone Man's the next picture we've got up. Uh, a bit of a spotlight on him, a bit yeah. of a moody shot. He's got his uh, yeah. singing away. How do you, how do you approach, like, uh, again, you said, like, Chase and Status are a bit mental on stage. There's a lot of them. Rag and Bone Man's more of a solo performer with a couple of people on stage. Yeah, I mean, that's a lot easier. Like, for example, similar to Chase, State, Chase and Status, I shot Stormzy last week, and uh, he is everywhere. Like, you know, he's all over the stage. So you're obviously going to use a lot more... I was using quite high-speed shutter on that because of jumping and flames and everything like that, where Rag and Bone Man, similar to a Liam Gallagher, whoever, will just stand behind the mic and just, just you know, use the guitar. So you've got... You can be a little bit more sort of, you know... Um, it's an easier job if the lighting's nice, obviously. If the lighting's all over the show, it's a bit, a bit, and what, bit and what, more of a challenge. So, but. And, and you said earlier, if the, if the light is rubbish, then you're thinking, right, black and white is, is where I'm going to go with this. Uh, sometimes. That, we always laugh as photographers going, yeah, it's a black and white gig this one. Right. Do you know what I mean? But, uh, I'm, like I'm going to remember that. Ruth, next time, Ruth, next um, time I do a Hacienda classical show, I might try that, that line. On a, on a photographer and go, yeah. And, but, and also, Graham, black and white is um, classic. I quite, quite it like is. it to have a classic look sometimes, wouldn't you? It is. 
Um, now, not just live bands, you also do a lot of live club shots. And the next yeah. image I've got is from Ibiza. And it's the crowd. Yeah. There's a couple of people with phones in their hands. There's a crowd going, uh, hands in the air. There's some palm trees in the background. And then there's this, I'm assuming it's a dancer or a model kind of who's kind of sticking up from above the crowd. Is this shot... Um, stage. Which one is that? Which which, which one is that? She's is got it? a silver bikini on and oh, right, a yeah. silver <laughs> mask. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. 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 So, yeah. So, oh, Ibiza girl, we call that one. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Ishwara That's girl. it. Ibiza yeah, yeah. girl. I was trying to remember the yeah. name of Ibiza yeah. girl. Yeah. Um, was that staged or did you just no, snap that? That happened. That was just. That was just. I was on the stage. There's a, a club in Ibiza called Ishwara, which is outdoor. Yeah. Probably one of my favourite places in the world to photograph because the production's great. The DJ's are great. Just, you're in a, it's just amazing. It's just a great place to photograph. But I was on stage with a long lens and she was dancing and just caught the eyes. We just caught each other's eye. It was like two frames, bang, bang, done. She caught you eye right, and you caught right her place, eye. Right place, yeah. right time. I'm surprised that yeah. you caught her eye, but anyway. Um, but yeah, because she's looking <laughs> right down the lens, isn't well, she? Well, I had a massive long camera lens. And I think it was like she saw, you know, the type of pose sort of thing. Yeah, no, that, that's, that's, that, that's, I think that's, that's, of all the shots we've um, shown, I think that's my favourite because it is, it's a very stunning shot. And uh, yeah. I, I had yeah. to ask if it was staged or if it was, if it just happened. No, no, not staged. And, you know, I quite like this bloke in the back and taking a photo of her as well. I quite like that. I can see it. We'll see you on faces. Yeah. So, um, what advice would you give to someone then who's, who, who wants to be a photographer? And, and also, is it, is it true to say that because technology, um, like like digital technology, like so many fields, um, makes being a photographer more accessible. So there are more photographers. It's kind of democ technology, digital technology has democratised the whole field. Um, what you got? What have you got to do to stand out? Apart from being a great photographer, obviously. What else can you? What advice can you give to somebody who wants to do what you do? I think I think you're right. I think I think a few years ago there was a chat between a lot of the photographers we were talking about especially in the club industry. I don't do as many clubs anymore. I do more special events, more because I'm a bit older now. <laughs> I'm going to be in clubs all weekend. Um, but there was a stage where we all spoke to each other going, there's a lot more people coming through with like smaller cameras, doing work for free. And, you know, and it was, for me, I was like, okay, well, you know, that's the way things are moving. But that's a great advice as well, is don't be scared to do things for free when you're starting off. Get in there, you know, speak to your local clubs or music events, you know, and, and be prepared to do things for free to start off with. Build your portfolio up. Speak to other photographers to help them, like we were talking about with um, assisting and things like that. Don't expect to go in and earn thousands of hundreds of pounds straight away. Build your work up. Make sure you've got a good portfolio before you show off things. I mean, it's quite hard to get in there straight away. But start, you know, you might have friends that are singers and things like that. You might have friends that have got friends and bands. Ask them if you can do their photos and things like that. Portraits all live and just start building up your work. I suppose, That's yeah, I suppose. I and as well, if, if, you, if you know a DJ or you know someone who's a band, you're going to get on the guest list as well, aren't you? And you're Comedian. Gonna, <laughs> you know, anything, yeah. anything. Or, or, even, or even like with... with um, you know, I know it seems silly, but like behind the scenes of stuff, like you know, behind the scenes of making TV programs at the where you are now, or something like. Just start doing things that you want to enjoy. You know, I like behind the scenes of music videos. I love that. You know, and, and that's just going behind where everyone you're documenting everything. At what point though do you have to start charging money? At what point do you, do you say, right, I need to um, start? making a living out or making money out of this and, and, and how do you that's, decide yeah, that, that, that's, that's a good one. how do you decide what to charge though is, is there any is there any reference uh, points or any um websites that would help a, a, an up-and-coming photographer decide what to charge do you know what i don't know that, that's that's the tricky one and the that uh, which you said is when you start when you, you know, decide what to charge people, I think what I did was it starts, at, you know, at a low number, obviously, just get more and more, the more work you get and the more recognised you get and the more, I mean, I'm quite fortunate now that people come to me for work with me chasing it normally. 
So that's so, when you start but seeing presumably, the change. Presumably, and I and I and I and I, I've never asked you this because um, mm. I've never I've never I've never tried to book you. But presumably, you must have a fee or a, a, gen a general type of fee. But when you started out, how did you know what to charge? And 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 did yeah. and did you ever have clients go, oh come on, mate, I'm not paying that. Didn't. Sorry. Well, you didn't know what to charge. I'll tell you what, the other way is when they go, yeah, straight away, and you think, oh, no. I oh, it happens to me all the time with, with, so, corporate, you know, that, with corporate work. I say, I've yeah, this that, much, yeah. Where you've done that, and they've just agreed straight away. Like, yeah, okay, and you're thinking, oh, man. Um, it's, it's, it's a tricky one with fees. I think you've got to, you know, see who you're shooting as well. If you're shooting someone that's an up-and-coming singer, you know they're not going to have much money. Yeah. But they need to pay you something. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Because obviously, you know, but when you're shooting someone that you know is a big artist or you're working for a, a, a record label or something like that, I mean, the budgets aren't as good as they used to be, and that's the honest truth. But, you know, you can, you, you can charge, you know, what you think you're worth. It is tricky, and it's just a bit of getting to know... It takes a little while to get working out but prices. But pre presumably, like though, I mean, you, what you're saying is research the client, right? Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and w would you ever do work for someone because you thought, well, I think this would be a really good project to do, so I, I can have some movement on my 100%. feet? 100%. 100%. I do, I do, I do, I've done, I do still do stuff for free sometimes. I'll, I'll, just I'll to... give you a call later, normally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No DJs, no. Um, <laughs> um, but, no but, but you know but, what I mean? I do, if I really want to do it and I know, you know, Sometimes, you know, I'll just go, look, I'll just do it, you know, just whack in some travel and do that. Very well, yeah, rarely, I was gonna say, you, you need to... might not be, you know. Yeah, you want to you cover your travel, don't you? You travel uh, yeah. and, and, and various expenses before you think about what you're going to charge on top, don't you? Absolutely. And obviously, being in Southampton, there's always a little bit more of a, you know, a, a fee, an added fee on top. But sometimes you have to incorporate that back in your overall overall price because obviously you don't want to lose a job that someone in London but how, will just get. You know. how, how do you operate? Hopefully they... How do you operate? Are you a sole trader or do you have a limited company? I'm a limited company. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so does that mean, like me, during during the pandemic yeah. lockdown you got no money at all? No, I didn't. I didn't. Which was, you know, it was frustrating. But everyone was, I, I was, I was, well, I was say fortunate. My wife works full time. And the other thing is, I was I was a teacher for six months with the kids, you know, so it was nice to spend time with them because normally that time of year I'm, all, I'm away working and abroad or something like that. But were you, were, um, it, it were was you frustrating, able to work? though. Were you able to work during the pandemic, though? If you weren't getting help from the government uh, and we're all in lockdown. Well, as you know, Graham, is our industry is, is as most people with the, with the entertainment industry, that completely shut. So that was gone. But I was fortunate I... I sort of kicked myself up the arse to do some prints. I did a print store, which did all right. It was mostly to friends and friends of friends. I didn't, you know, but it was good. It was a lot of older beef for sunsets and all that. But I've never wanted to, I've never had time to put online. And then I also was fortunate, because obviously being in Southampton and knowing a lot of people from down the years, I did a lot of corporate stuff. Because that was still going. So I did a lot of... Um, when we could open, like, the, you know, after about July time, I was doing headshots for local businesses and all that, which kept me going until the DJs and the musicians and the things started to come on board again. Um, so it's good. I'm still doing that now, to be honest. It's good. Yeah. I've still got so, good so you, you had to adapt to the lockdown. You, you told me yeah. earlier, I mean, I've, I've given all the students the link to danread.co.uk, but you yeah. were telling me earlier you've got other websites as well. Tell, tell us got, about um, them and why you've got other websites. So I've got danreadcreative.co.uk. Now, basically, I don't want to mix what I do on a website. That's just down to me. I know a lot of people that do. So I've got um, my creative site's more corporate. So I've, got, I've just done some stuff for Haven Holidays last year, which is a big project, actually. I'm Pioneer Photographer, which is the, you know, the, as you know, the, yeah. the equipment, um, pretty greens on there. Um, and then some local state agents I've done. I've done stuff with the Tim Henman Foundation, the tennis player. So he's on there. Um, just there's a, low, it's a variety of things, but it's more that business corporate side of it. So, uh, local, just, you know. so it's a conscious decision to keep the two separate? 100% for me. Yeah. That's down to, but no. my, my my, my, my advice would be, for me, is don't dilute 
on the website. If you want to be a music portrait, music photographer, have one site for that and have something separate. If you, if you, it's down to you, but that's me. But at the end of the day, it's about making a living from what doing something you love. Yeah. So everyone, you've yeah. got your public persona, like Dan Reed, he's always at the gigs and he's hanging out with DJs. But meanwhile, in the background, you're doing bread and butter stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I'm not, you know, that's, that's you've got to earn a living. You know, we've got families you, and everything like that. So, you, you know, I'm not... Do you approach them in the same way or, or are you, do you have as much freedom? Way. Do you have as much freedom for corporate work? Uh, not as much freedom, especially the corporate stuff you don't. I mean, for example, I did a, a, I did a massive shoot for Haven last year, which was really challenging. It was, I was, in, you know, Haven holidays, you know, the, the parks. I was yeah. basically employed to go to each park in the southeast. So it was eight, eight or nine parks in Cornwall, Devon, um, Somerset. Um, and all that, and basically go to each park and photograph the p general public doing uh, <laughs> activities. So it was really tricky, you know. So well, there's no models, and no. you know, uh, it was going up to like you know someone that was on the climbing, you know, the adventure climb, and going, look, guys, we're from Haven. Oh, right, so, so you, you got con you got consent for? Oh us. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had my I had an assistant with me with a with a you know a form thing on the iPad. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you a know, I wasn't form. just going in. Yeah, yeah no, <laughs> I'd look a bit funny with a guy walking in with a camera what? shooting loads of families. Yeah, do you know what I mean? Weirdo. But it, it was challenging. Yeah, it was really challenging because obviously you're dealing with the general public. But I'd say ninety percent of the people there were fine. They said yes straight away. You had a few said no. I'm not. Don't want my photo taken. Right. What What pays better, the, uh, the 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 stuff you the, the stuff you love or the corporate stuff? I think corporates. Better money sometimes. Just depend, again, it depends who you pay and who, what job it is. Yeah. But the music's not, as you know, it's not as good as it used to be. So it's like, you know. <laughs> I've got a question that's come up from Sean. Um, he says yeah. that at the beginning of the interview, you mentioned you had a collection of pictures from club scenes in the 90s. He says he yeah. loves the Jeremy Dellers film, Everybody in the Place, which captured the era brilliantly. Have you got a portfolio or a collection that you could view online of these early 90s shots? Uh, I Sean, sure, they're not early, I would say mid 90s. Mid 90s yeah. Early 90s, I was, um, I was, didn't think about taking the camera with me, I was raving and things like that. But um, <laughs> do you know what? I, I, um, I don't know if, yeah, I, I've never thought about it. I should put some up because I've got old pictures like Sasha and Paul yeah. Openfold and. And all that, because that's what I was into. That you and me on the terrace house. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> when, when you've got hair, I probably don't, but you said you had hair. Yeah, yeah. No, you, you've got a little bit, Graham. Right. You've got, you know, you've, you've got too much, though. Probably um, like I am now. Have you, have you not done a book? I'd love to do a book. That's one of my sort of things, but I don't know. Sometimes I think, am I good enough to do one? I, I don't know. It's just, yeah, is I think it not like a time, an artist. Like, is it not like or, a time or, thing, though? Because if, you, if you're so busy, um, now, now we're out of the pandemic and think, well, not well, almost out of the pandemic, it's still there, but yeah. slowly getting back to normal. You, you're probably too busy to be compiling yeah, portfolios. Yeah, do you know what? And, and also for a book, it would be, what would the subject be? Because obviously, yeah. would it just be live? Would it be me? Would it be a beta? Would it be yeah. portraits? Would it be DJs? And also, you've got to look out for people want to buy it. Mm. That's what I think, you know. So perhaps it might be something when I'm in my you know, late 50s, 60s, that perhaps I'll look at doing something like that as a retrospective sort of thing. I'd love to do a book, actually. It's something I've always wanted to... You and you could, like, fund it now, can't you? You could do fun yeah, exactly. thing and all that sort of stuff. But, um, Does... yeah, I, I, I've got a few more years until I'd be happy to actually release one, I think. So, um, all your old stuff, did you, I think you said earlier it's in the attic, is it? All your old... I've print? got old... I've got, like, the old sort of old, you know... Um, Devon contact and prints in the attic, and then I've obviously got like hard drives and clouds. Yeah, I was going to ask how many, how many hard how many hard drives have you got? Uh, they're, they're bigger ones now. I keep upgrading, yeah. but I've got twenty terabyte with stuff on it. Wow! And then yeah, and then the clouds, obviously, you know, with stuff that try and do it. So. And, and what cameras do you use now? I've just upgraded to the Canon R fives, which are the new mirrorless systems. Which is brilliant. Yeah. What's the I'm, advantage? I'm loving it. What you say, just, when you say mirrorless? What's it for someone who's uh, not just mirrorless? Is just uh, what's the it's, advantage? It's complete, it's complete digital. Um, like in the viewfinder, you see what you're actually shooting. You know, like you know, it's all completely. 
it's a, a lot easier. It's, I'm loving, absolutely loving it. It's quick. It's just uh, the new lenses are great, a lot cleaner, a lot clearer. I just yeah, it's just, just it's been the it's the best camera I've ever used, if you know what I mean. So. And if you, I mean, are you in a position where if you're not working and someone calls you and we need you now, do you just can you just grab stuff and go? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that's a lot of my jobs. A lot of them are like yesterday. Someone said, "Can you do tomorrow? Can you do next week?" And you know, it's it's just that you know sometimes you have a quiet week and you go, "God, this is or quiet month, for example." Because it does happen. It's not you're not busy all the time. You no. know, you you've got to use your you know that's the time when you update your website and you email clients and. And, and do that sort of stuff. But um, sometimes they yeah, can you do a, all that stuff? Can you go away next two days' time to Ibiza or Berlin or something? You know, you're just like, God, could you have told me this a week ago? Do you get all your work? Um, do people come to you directly or do you have an agent or any third parties that you get work through? No, just just direct, yeah, yeah. Just uh, just word of mouth. And obviously you do have to, you do have to graph still though and like, email old clients and yeah. new clients and people that you want to, you know, yeah, but... don't. But if you're going Don't through, rest on my laurels. But if you yeah. work for yourself and you've got your yeah. own company and you've got yeah. a lean spell, then obviously you need to go, damn, I need to get some money in. And that's when you start doing the... Yeah, 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 yeah. That's when, even now, because I've done quite a lot since my last update at my site. So I'm in a beta in a couple of weeks and then I've got, I'm quite busy. So I'm looking probably like end of May when I'll start updating things. So We've got a, a, a question from Alex, uh, which is... A, Sounds like a photographer question. You mentioned yeah. you have a high shutter speed um, for for one of the pictures. You, well, the chasing, uh, I think the chasing storm. The Stormzy. Thing. The Stormzy, yes, yeah, Stormzy. Yeah. You said you had a high shutter speed for some gigs, so the yeah. image doesn't have any blur. Has there ever been a yeah. gig where it hasn't been bright enough or well enough lit to have such a high shutter speed? And, and how would you deal with someone jumping about with poor light then? That, that's tricky, Alex. That, 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 it just depends. I mean, I think the bigger gigs you shoot, nine times out of ten, they're, I mean, you know Stormzy is going to be a great production. There was about 20 trucks outside before you went in, you know, all the, the sort really? of low things. So, yeah, there was loads. And it, you know, you know, but it's the smaller gigs, like the local sort of, you know, like the sort of, like dingy, sawdust, sort of sweaty gigs that you turn up and it's just spot on. That's challenging when you when they're moving around, especially rappers and or you know that sort of thing or hip hop or things like that where they're moving around. When you've got like sort of rock rock stuff, it's normally it just depends on the venue and the lighting. It's quite rare though to to go to a a, a big event because I normally uh, you know I'm quite fortunate lately to do big arenas. So I do a lot of the O2, I do a lot of Wembley, I do a lot in like the Brighton Centre, Bournemouth. You know, so they're all big arena shows so they're all not reasonably you know well lit shows but sometimes they do hit you know they do throw one at you that you're going oh my god so you just have to put up the iso so that makes you can go up on the shutter speed and then then you have to shoot quite open at 2.8 so you let as much light in as you can and sometimes just <laughs> hit and hope mate just you know and just hope you get something that you know and how many cam usable. how many cameras do you take to a live show? Two. So I have one. I have two. I have a twenty four seventy on this one and a seventy to two hundred on this one. So you can move between for a close up or a wide. It might if it's a really good show. I might put a fifteen to thirty five on, which is wider, or even a fisheye fifteen mil fisheye, which gives that sort of warped effect, which can work sometimes. Yeah. So I mean, the tools you trade are great. You just grab and go these days. Yeah. What about flash? Yeah. I mean, uh, do you, what about? Tell me about flash. I am not a photographer, so I can't ask specific yeah. questions. But tell me about flashes when you're performing live. When when you're shooting live, sorry. Uh, live, I, I don't use flash. Don't use. I, I hate. Very rare. I use it in the club. Um, if the, the, that's that's what Alex was talking about before. The live shots I've noticed aren't as bad for lighting, but clubs can be dreadful. Because obviously they like it dark and moody, so then you're at the 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 hope and hit and hope sometimes of the production being reasonably good with right. lighting. Because I don't like using flash. There's some photographers that like putting them up on the side and lighting them in. That's fine, but for me, I like to use the ambient light and try and get the atmosphere of the club itself. If you know what I mean. So that's quite challenging. But like things when you work in a beefer and places like that, again, the production's pretty good. 
but the, that that's more challenging than, than live, I find. Okay. So with with Flash, with the live stuff, you're not allowed to use it anyway, because you're not allowed to use Flash with any of the live concerts. So uh, it's you just got to, you know, get get in that mode where you don't need need, need Flash. You have you're the element of the production. Okay. Well, look, Dan, listen, this has been absolutely uh, fascinating. A great insight into into what you do and um, and how you work. And hopefully, I'll uh, see you at some point now that. Uh, Clubs Definitely, and live yeah, venues yeah. Uh, are bet getting back to normal. Um, yeah. Am I all right for um, if I have any questions from students, passing them on to you? Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So listen, Dan Reed, photographer. Thank you very much for joining us on Creative Futures, and um, that's it for this week. And we'll see you again soon, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Cheers.